give it just a minute here and watch it. Watch what? It's ready. Rock and roll, baby. Yep. Nope. Nope. Over here first. Oh, one day. One, one day. day. One of these days. I never and get it It ain't right. going to be long. I will never get it totally right every time. Oh, yes. yeah. I got uh, confidence in you, baby. Okay. I believe in you. All right. Mm -hmm. Hello, everybody. Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead. And mm. uh, I don't know what five times five. I don't know what five times five means, but. That's the first thing I saw. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing that popped up here. You got to sit back. Oh, I I'm told sorry. You. <laughs> We're having to do this. We're having to figure out the shadow thing here. You know, like spooking and moving around like this, you know? I don't know. we got all kinds of weirdness. You're not 30 minutes late, holler late. We're an hour late. <laughs> we changed last week from 7 Central to 8 Central. That's what we used to do all the time. Yep. And uh, with the winter time, it was easier for us to do 7. But in the summer... It's better for us to do eight. Eight. And yeah. That's central time. So some of y'all nine o'clock. Oh, five stuff. by five means good audio and good video. Oh. All right. Thumbs up. Let's see how long that lasts. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, man. What a week. What a week. We've yeah. had a beautiful week here, as a matter of fact. I mean, it's been really nice weather this week. Been a little cool, though. Not uh, cold, but not, for well, Danny, it's cool. For me, I'm okay. It's been in the 50s That's because 60s. she's in the house in the morning and I'm outside. That's why. <laughs> when you get up in the morning and it's 38 and 39 degrees and 40 and the wind's blowing, it's cold. It only did that a couple of times. It's been in the 50s and 60s. We ain't been hardly in the 50s and 60s. Mm -hmm. Not much. Yeah. We've been in but the 40s. But now the days are hitting... 70s and I, did you today, say 80? Today it made it to 80 degrees. Yes, yeah. made it to 80 degrees. Today. And then we got and, a. And this morning, now get this: this morning it was 47. Yeah. And it went to 80 today. That really messes with the cell structure of your plants in a garden because they're they get screaming mm. hot. Now 80 was just the temperature. That was not the heat index. The heat index was higher than that. But the plants, they go from cold to hot. Cold to hot. That's not that's not good on a plant. Yeah. So, I had my... I'm telling what I had. I had the first mini cucumber yes. this week. Yes, 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 um, yes. Very good. I, it I, was... It's it about was, that long. I think... It, let me see. It was really crunchy. I had... I made Danny eat some. Yeah. I'm not a big cucumber fan. I like them dill or I like them sweet pickles, you know. But yeah, it's just to eat them raw. They give me indigestion a lot of times. And I'm not a big fan of them raw. But this one was like eating a, a what do they call them, gherkin? Like a little small. Very crunchy. <clears throat> and that's off the mini cucumber from uh, Vago, Vago Gardens. Gardens, yeah. I mean, I've already got one. I had to take a couple off because I left it an extra day longer than I should. I was going to get it when Danny was doing the walk around. Yeah. And I said, no, I'll wait till the next day. Well, the next day I forgot it, and it was the second day later. And by that big one being on there, some of the others had started shriveling because it thought it was already time to quit. And I'm like, no, yeah. keep going. So I've got a bunch of blooms, and I've still got four or five little ones on there. So they're starting to kick it now. And in a day or so, I'll have a second one. Yeah, then, it was, I have to admit, it actually, it didn't taste too, uh, uh, it was sweet. Yeah, it, it had, wasn't bitter at all. It wasn't all. bitter at all. It actually, And we didn't cut the ends. And you know how you do a regular, we like just a pickling, eat all of it. Just, just eat it. It was, it was really good. And um, I've got tomatoes probably about the end of my finger right here tiny little tomatoes on one plant and and that's the vago minis and then i have a cherry tomato that has a couple i mean little bitty i mean you just see the tomatoes forming and let me let me address something right now some people were saying i don't want one of those things those little vega plants because minis because they're gmo no they're not GMO. They 
have been bred up they're through. They're a hybrid. They're, they're a hybrid. Yeah. They're not a GMO. They, there's hybridization is, is, and grafting up in different ways to dwarf it. I mean, it's not anything to do with genetically modifying anything. Yeah. And what else have we had? We, Oh, Nadia's wanting to know, when do you know when I'll receive my Vega bed? Will the uh, company notify me? I think me? they have shipped it. I'm not 100%. You should get an email. Uh, usually they're really good about sending an email as soon as it's... She's already put in the order. I know that. So when it ships, you'll get an email, and then you can track it. Should be able to. And mm -hmm. I should get an email as soon as it's... Butterfly out. 31 has deer stead there. As a matter of fact, we heard our monitors. We have monitors oh, on our property, you know. And we were sitting here while going. One of our monitors in the driveway went off. We got like, who's coming down our driveway? And we looked out there, and there were deer running across our yard. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. We can't get away from them. It doesn't matter where we go. Yeah. Uh, Miss Lippy may be our only moderator tonight. Uh, I know some of them have things they're doing. So if we have a problem, we'll engage a few others happy dog says how do y'all get rid of squash bugs well we've actually tried a lot of different things and a lot of things has worked for us one is the uh uh fish emulsion you can mix up some fish emulsion and put it right around the uh, base of your squash plant and the uh dr earth's golden bloom golden you got it right. i got it right that time liquid phosphorus uh, stinks to high heaven, but it has worked for us. It's in pink yeah. and white with black writing, I think. Yes. That's the way I tell people to look for it because they have several products. But Golden Bloom is, I think the, the whole container's white. It has some pink on it, and then the writing is in yeah. black, I believe. And also, you can plant radishes right up against your squash plants. And don't pull them when they get ready. Just leave them and let them go to seed and all that kind of stuff. And that repels squash bugs and stink bugs also. Uh, Kimberly said those monitors crack me up. She's talking about the... Um, Oh, the deer dog, the, dog uh, the barking dog. Yeah, one? Danny was talking about just our. Yeah, we're talking about our we driveway have, monitor. We have one that notifies us if anybody's in our driveway or anything like that. All right, Dan and uh, Buddy are on here, so yeah, we've got two in the background slinking and watching. Okay. So we've got help. Um, Let's see here. Yeah, they're giving you a thumbs up. Yay! Yay! I actually got it right. Yeah. Oh man. And Miss Janine from Fairhope, Alabama. Alabama. Okay, so. Uh, Does bone sauce sell in Canada? Uh, yeah, I don't know. You would have to talk to Mr. Billy over at uh, Permapastures Farms and ask them can they ship to Canada, Darlene, because I really, to be honest with you, I don't know. Okay. I got a, a note here from um, Miss Dorothy. She's D. Foley and Nash Rambler on here. Um, she sent me some of my very favorite special stuff in the whole wide world, simply because in the South we can't grow. We can't grow. We can't do it in the South. <laughs> Y'all look at this. Isn't that awesome? Pure maple syrup. And I was almost out. Y'all want to know what I paid for a little she, bitty... We was in the store and she bought a, was it an eight ounce? No, I don't even, it probably wasn't four or Six. I was thinking it was eight, but it um, might. Uh, they little, counted the small glass. Organic maple syrup, and they counted the glass it was in. I think you could probably use it all in two sittings. You know? I could if I was, but but I've been making she's it been, last. Uh, she's been really sparingly with it because she likes her maple How syrup. How much did I pay for that? That was eight or nine dollars for that little bit. Eight or thing? nine dollars for a little old bottle about that high. I, I mean, mean little little bottle. And I poured just a little bit in my oatmeal, and I was like, oh, I'm going to run out. And then I went to the mail, and thank you, Miss D. Foley. This one's from New Hampshire, y'all. She's in New Hampshire. This is a whole quart. This is 32 ounces. Yeah, this is 32. This, this will last a little while, yeah. <laughs> as long as I'm good uh, with it. Um, and then, let me see who else. We got... Um, for Miss Judy, she sent me a roll of stamps, y'all, because I was sending out um, 
a lot of the little seeds when we were doing the giveaway i was using envelopes and just putting a packet of seed and send them out so she helped me out by reimbursing me with some uh, stamps so thank you miss judy and then monkey food garden monkey mama sent this note and a little tag for our greenhouse and some towels and this is one of them and it matches my daughter had given me a cup that says plant lady with i think some of the same plants on it yeah <laughs> at christmas so we want to say thank you to all of you that sent stuff and i'm i hope i hadn't overlooked anybody okay there's uh, miss suzanne i thought i saw you a couple of days ago you were going around in jack's lumber yard <laughs> you were headed the, in the back when we were headed inside Nadia says, Danny, where did you get the seeds for seedless grapes? Uh, we didn't get the seeds. We actually bought the grape vines themselves. You can get them at Walmart. Well, we missed them at Walmart, and we missed them at... Uh, somebody else said they had them in town. And every, every everywhere we, we went, went we, they were sold out. Somebody, somebody come through and just bought them all up, they told me. And I don't know... What, Probably Suzanne. <laughs> it might have been Suzanne. I don't know. She's going all over the place buying up stuff. You know yeah. that. Uh, especially Danny says he likes grapes. She went and bought them all. Yeah. We go to her house. She got a grapevine. She probably everywhere. have an orchard out there. <laughs> I don't know. I have to pick on Miss Suzanne. Um, Can Squatch says nothing will deter squirrels. I have to differ with you. I have a pellet gun, <laughs> an air rifle, that deters them really, really well. It got, in fact, it got rid of about forty-six of them one year. How long did you cut your PVC pipe to make the hoops? Rose wants to know. Oh, uh, Rose, I, I, it's not PVC, it's uh, PEX, and I don't actually know the length of it. I just stuck one end of it down and just bent it over and cut it off at whatever height I wanted it. I, I don't now, know that there is I a I will tell you that one year he had them down lower, and our carrot, well, even this year, yeah, the carrots grew so tall that we had to take the little ones off and make higher ones. Yeah. So, if you think your plant's going to get very high, yeah, go up higher, and for the hoop because otherwise you're just going to have to cut another one later. Uh, McLeod says, any Cherokee pumpkin seeds for sale anytime soon? Can't find any anywhere. Uh, send us an email, McLeod. We yeah. might we might have some left around here. We might come help I have you out to there. see if we can find a few here somebody uh, said they got some seedless grapes at tractor supply we didn't see any when we were there no we looked well we, we looked. went in there one time they were one of them that said they sold out yeah uh there was two or three places around town <laughs> cold to sex said i said pecks out loud like y'all could hear me <laughs> <laughs> you were helping us out just helping us out there there you go Ooh. Oh man. Jane Janie Janie D J says they um get maple syrup from a local Amish community in Michigan. Forty five dollars a gallon. Woo. It's a lot of work to do maple syrup though. I mean we cook our own cane syrup, you know, every year. And cane syrup is an all day process to make uh what what do we usually make? About sixteen to twenty pints, something like that. Yeah. And doing it the way we do it. And maple syrup takes twice as much sap and you don't get as much syrup. So yes, it is a very, very tedious job. Let's see here. Grandma's Guardian says, I cut my pecs 54 inches. Oh, I couldn't tell you exactly. I don't know how long mine is. I'm just being honest. I just stick it on there and bend it over. and I go, well, the plants is going to get this high and I whack it off. He, did, he didn't even measure anything. I didn't measure nothing. And, and that's true. DBS says if you make the pecs high, you will need to stabilize it, you know, on, with something on top because it you does, have some it does get limber. Now, my, when I made them out of PVC. Oh, that's right. It was. I did. Had I had the, uh, the T crosses on top of it to stabilize it. $60 a gallon for syrup in northern Ohio, Woo. Jeff said. Woo. Let's see. Um, Donna said, Tractor Supply, Walmart, and Home Depot all have grapes. Ours did not. 
They, oh, no, well, she, they did, but they sold out. Now, Grandma's Garden says no, Pex was five foot eight inches long, not 58 inches long. Oh. <laughs> Jennifer Putman says, I'm so excited. My mother recognized y'all. She has dementia and doesn't recognize lots of folks. I streamed the live through the TV, and she says, hey, that's the farmer man and one, woman we watch. Uh -oh, oh, that is awesome. Well, you know, that's kind of funny. Stimulation. That's kind of funny that you mentioned that. My, uh, my, one of my mother-in-laws uh, had dementia when she got to be old, old. And she couldn't remember who her daughters were. She couldn't remember who anybody else was in the family. But she never forgot who I was. You just uh, went off. Name we back. We're going to uh, be doing do this. Do you use a pre-plant fertilizer on your pickling cucumber plants? A pre-plant fertilizer. I don't know what a pre-plant fertilizer is. I uh, don't know quite how to answer that one. Do well, y'all think seven dust is safe? Uh, Hat Barn says, no. Seven dust is carburetor. It is not safe. Uh, I, we don't use it. We don't use any chemicals on our property at all, all right, except right. Roundup, and that's for only for the invasive kogan grass that come from the Chinese country. All right, Howard wants to know, what is the best and cheapest soil or dirt to use in a raised bed garden? Well, that's a good question about cheapest. Uh, <laughs> what we do is... We just cheapest. take brush piles that we've had piled up on our land for a long time and it's rotted down. We just dig up that dirt and pull some of the sticks out of it and put it in the bottom of the beds until we get it up about half full. And then we mix Schultz potting soil in with the other half of it and kind of turn it in with some vermiculite and some perlite. And then we do the soil test on it. We lime it. We, you know, we amend it. We, you know, we do that kind of stuff. Yeah, we the soil that we do buy to add into things is Schultz. Yes, and it is a it has a nine. It has a time release fertilizer and it's good for nine months. Nine months, yeah. yeah. I was gonna say ninety days, but nine months. Uh, Sterling uh, Naquin, did I say that right? I live in Carrier, Mississippi. I know where North Carrier is. Do you have any suggestions on how to keep <laughs> fire ants out of raised beds? Well. If I could answer that, with all honesty, I would be a millionaire right now. Uh, the best thing that I've found to do with fire ants and raised beds is just keep disturbing them. Take a, take a long stick and just keep jobbing it down in the fire ant bed. and Just keep doing it and keep doing it. And uh, pour some boiling water in them every so often. And eventually, they'll just get tired of being messed with, is my experience, and they just leave and go outside the bed. And then you got to deal with them somewhere else. Then you got to deal with them outside, but at least they're not in the bed. All right, Robert Mitchell. I guess what I'm asking is, what kind of fertilizer do you use when you're planting pickling cucumbers? Oh, uh, we just use uh, we just use a regular, well balanced fertilizer like eight twenty four twenty four or. Uh, you don't want anything with too much nitrogen up front because you don't want your plants to get burnt, you know. So we always start off with low nitrogen, high potassium, high phosphorus, and like 824-24 or, or 888 is another good one. Well, we try to start off like that. What does my shirt say? On a hill far away, and it's got a cross. And it's On got the words all over. Far away. All the words to the song and Stood I hear far away. Wonders. No, I'm sorry. Rugged no. cross. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, D E uh, T L D Y A S O said diatomaceous earth all around the bed. You can use D E, works really, really good as long as it's dry, but if it gets wet, it's totally useless. Uh, Jerry Evans says, just wanted to say hello from Mill, Milled, M Milledgeville, I guess, Milledgeville, yeah, Georgia. Yeah, Milledgeville, Georgia, and I thank you for all the helpful information, Danny, you provide. Hope you have a good Easter. All right. Elizabeth Green, Danny, is it time to plant sweet potatoes in Zone 8? Uh, 
if you're in the lower part of zone eight, yeah, you can go ahead and plant your sweet potatoes, but I don't know. I'm not 100% sure about the upper part because next week we got some, for us, we're going to get down to 39 degrees one or one or two days. And I don't know if you're far enough ahead of me, if it's still cold enough that you might get a frost. Uh, so check next week your temperatures and see what they're going to, they're forecasted to be. Happy life. How do I find the motivation to work in my garden? I don't like being hungry. Starvation. Starvation. Yeah. Because we don't Works run. Every time. We don't run to the grocery store and stock up on food. You know, we just stay out of the grocery stores as much as possible. And when you do that and you don't have nothing to eat, it kind of, a growling stomach kind of makes you get the urge that you need to grow something. On the shoulders of giant says she loves when you sing. Oh, Lord, help your soul. Catherine Elkin says, I hear silly in your voice tonight. <gasps> He's tired. I am very, very, very tired. I've put about 200 miles on my tractor this week. <laughs> yeah, when he gets in that mood, the tractor goes crazy. Yeah. Do you use calcium nitrate for your tomato plants? Acorn Hill Farms. Yes, I do. When they start blooming, I use it. <coughs> but I use it very carefully because if you don't get too much nitrogen, your tomato plant will just go wacko. It just starts growing everywhere and you don't really get that many tomatoes. All right, somewhere. Uh, Ro Ronald Hagen. Danny, are you and Miss Wanda concerned about the eclipse? Oh, Ronald. I'm not concerned about the eclipse. Um... I'm anxiously watching it because I do believe in my own personal way that there are some prophetic things about this eclipse. Because first of all, in Genesis, you know, it's, they, the Lord teaches us through scripture that he's given us the moon and the sun and the stars and all that for signs and for seasons up there. Now, does everything that goes on up there mean anything? And the answer is no. But sometimes things do mean things. And I do, I do believe that this one here carries a meaning with it. And I can't really get technical with it here tonight because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on out there about this eclipse that's not true. And I don't want to get drug off into that left field part of it. All right, Lana Gonzalez wants to know about the Schultz potting soil. It's S-C-H-U-L-T-Z, and we get it at Alexander's Hardware here in town. And they have changed... The They've changed the bag on it. They now have it with a new wetting agent in it, which is nothing more than peat moss or vermiculite. I mean, it's going to be one of the two uh, that's been added to it. It does make the bags way heavier, though, I'm going to tell you that. And, they, and it does have a time-release fertilizer in it. We don't wait an hour later. You're getting sleepier on me I'm early. I'm already ready to go to bed. No. <laughs> no. Y'all, my hands aren't... Well, this one is kind of red still. Oh, yeah. That's what we've been... Well, I hadn't, but Ms. Wanda has. Ms. Wanda's been harvesting mulberries. Yeah, yesterday I harvested enough. I made a um, cobbler. Yep. And then I put about a quart in the freezer, but I take the little stems off. And my hands were just so red yesterday. And then today I put, I think, three quarts in the freezer. So I've been, my hands were red for a while. These are still kind of red. So I got red hands. The end has come, says another bridge has been hit in Oklahoma. Was that today? Uh, well, we knew yesterday that they were looking at two more possible things uh, to happen. And... Uh, I've, I've been busy all day. I haven't been in to look at anything, to be honest with you. But we knew yesterday that we, well, we were told yesterday that there could possibly be two more events fixing to happen. All right. Mr. Ray Ferguson said he just found out his wife has a heart valve problem, so please pray for her tonight. We will, play, we will definitely pray for her, Mr. Ray. Uh, I, I suffer from some of the same problems. All right, Granny, no, Grand T said, do you have a wood-burning stove? Any suggestions on restoring one? Yes, we have uh, a wood-burning stove. We have the uh, Vogelzang uh, 
one that heats up to 3,000 square foot house. And uh, the best way to refurbish one of them things is to just get you a, uh, a wire brush on a drill or something like that and a pair of safety glasses and just get after it. And then when you get through, we rub ours down with plain lard and we just let it set and kind of soak into the metal on it really really good and then we build a small fire in it and let it kind of start it's just like seasoning a cast iron skillet basically the same thing you just put a little oil build a fire now it's going to smoke uh so anyway the oklahoma bridge was hit by a barge inspected and reopened already okay. all happened today okay didn't tear anything up, obviously. They didn't do a good enough job, I don't reckon. Didn't hit it hard enough, that's what I'm guessing. Gina Siska says, We live 25 minutes from the San Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore, and it was very suspicious. Well, you're going to find out a lot more suspicious things about it, I'm going to tell you. Uh, last Stop Home said, said they, were, they bought the miracle Grow potting soil, and it had huge pieces of... Uh, wood pieces and big rocks in the bag. You're going to find that with a you lot You find of that. Things. Occasionally in the Schultz, I'll find a little ball of clay or a piece of wood or something like that. That's quite, that's a common thing to happen. Uh, uh, Jimmy B said they found Schultz at the dollar store. So you oh, might wow. check dollar stores and just see. Check it out. Well, they I mean, may not have the big bags like we get. I mean, what size is that? Uh we got two cubic yards in a bag. Yeah, they may yeah. have a smaller bag, but, you know, I don't know. The end has come, says America ain't got much long, y'all. All, all great kingdoms have fallen. I agree. Uh, America is on its demise, that's for sure. Becky Graham says, how are our pineapple plants doing? We got a little pineapple, but yay big around. A little small one. We, we've got to... Uh, take some of the big ones out of the pots and replant a bunch of little ones. We've got babies everywhere, but yet the big ones have done made, and technically oh, yeah. we're supposed to take the big ones out and replant the little ones and stuff. But we yeah. just, um, April Fool's is coming up. Yeah. It's, it's a day or two. Well, what is today? The today 30th. is the 30th. Well, in two days we got April Fool's. Wow. Yeah. All right, well, let me see if I can get back over here. Um, B. Uh, Nemo says, our miracle gross topsoil was loaded with fruit flies. You know, that's one thing that Wanda and I have noticed over the years, that it seems like white flies or fruit flies and all that kind of stuff does come with some potting soil. You know, mm -hmm. we have experienced that ourselves. Yeah, because we were wondering in our high tunnel how we brought in all the extreme white flies and we about figured out it had to have been in potting soil. It had to have come through potting soil. So, and it's hard to get rid of that once it gets in your soil. So. Wanda, will you be growing any sunflowers this year? I thought about it. I'm just not sure. Um, I may stick some in Danny's corn up there somewhere <laughs> in them spaces. Yeah, they may be a few little places I, in there. there. He, his corn did... He's almost got like a hundred percent. I've almost got a hundred percent perfect uh, stand. Every now and then there's a spot. That would be a little two-foot spot every now and then, but I'm okay with that. I told him I'm, I'm going to pull ant something in them spots. So some flowers might... We, we actually got a video coming up on that. Monday. Is it Monday? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if it was Monday or Wednesday. On, on Danny Corn, but it'll be on Pecan Grove. Yeah, it'll be on Pecan Grove. Y'all watch the good videos. You gotta go over to Pecan Grove. Now, if you go still deep south right now, you're gonna see things like well, this right here, me and her. You know what I mean? Well, uh, the the high tunnel. We we've got a video Monday on the high tunnel. What we were doing yep. in there. Um, we got some good stuff in the high tunnel over deep over here at deep south. We we got some good stuff. Ronald wants to know: Do you ever brine your venison like corned beef? No, I, I never have. Uh, I'm not a big corned beef fan. Um, I know it's good because I've actually eaten it before, but it's uh, I'm just not a big fan of it. Uh, Chris ain't never said nothing bad. 
No, he's he said um, Biden's new proclamation is an April Fool's joke. <laughs> now that I could I could agree with. All I right. could agree with. Let me get my thing cleared so I don't mess something up. Uh, somebody said they got um, white flies with the bonnie plants. So, I mean, that's possible. It's quite possible. Soil, um, I mean, you've you got to really be careful when you get any plants anywhere because people who use tobacco, whether they dip, smoke, chew, whatever, uh, if they fondle around through plants and they've been handling tobacco with their hands, a lot of times you get the viruses on the plants and then you bring them home and you get them started in your place and next thing you know, you just got these viruses. Um, a soil wetting agent is a suffocant which breaks all soil tension and allows for better water penetration. That's Mark. Um, uh, yeah, the only reason I said that, Mark, is I looked on the bag and the extra thing it had for my old bags was, was uh, peat moss. It didn't have nothing else on the bag really except peat moss. And I figured, well, peat moss is a good soil retention thing. So, uh, I figured that's what was in the bag because I didn't see anything like vermiculite or anything special stuff added to it. Right. Are walnut shells safe for your garden? No, they're not safe for your garden. Double A, when can I set my pineapple plant outside? I'm in central Indiana. Whoo, you have to wait till Warm wait till weather. the wait till the temperatures are cooler than sixty five degrees for Ooh. sure. I mean, warmer than 65 <laughs> degrees. Yeah, a 70 would be better, but 65, they'll be okay, because me and Wanda's just had pineapples at 35 degrees before, but um, it, it, the warmer it is, the better. And the, the only problem with that is, you're living up there in Indiana, you don't have a lot of warm days for long periods of time. Your cool weather comes back in pretty quick, and it takes a good while to get a good pineapple. All right, some, somebody asked about putting, Becky said, is it a good to put small logs in the bottom of raised beds? Uh, yeah, you can put small logs in the bottom of raised beds. Just, um, just be aware that you could possibly get termites started, you know, that way by doing that. But, I mean, it will work to help take up some of the space. And then as they break down, the plants on the, the roots on the plants can feed on them and get some phosphorus from them. All right, Texas Chopper says, do I ever put walnuts in carrot salad? Well, I don't usually have walnuts, so no, but no. I have put pecans in them before. So any anything like that would work. Uh, how yeah. do we keep deer out of our sweet potatoes? They were about three inches high. Uh, well, we have ours, well, one, we use bone sauce. We have deer fencing. We have the dog pen fencing. We have, one, we have actually we have monitors with barking dogs and gun shooting and all that but we have <laughs> actually sit there and planted them inside our dog pen fence and things and the the vines will grow up the sides of the fence and we have actually sit and watched the deer on the outside of it eat the vines that off was of last the, year off yeah. of the outside of the fence they would eat everything they could get off the fence they couldn't get into it because of the little yeah spacing all right. Um, Samantha says, do y'all start any seeds inside? Uh, we usually we, do. Sometimes we do. But we like to just put things out. We, we started a lot last year and the year before. Um, we have a mini greenhouse over here uh, on the hill behind the house here that we use to start seeds in. And this year we didn't really get it done in time because we were over at pecan grove so much uh so we we opted to buy a lot of our stuff this year well i was sick too and then wanda was sick for about four months and that kind of knocked us back donna wants to know how do you know what zone you're in i uh, just google it just google uh uh your your grow your grow zones and a map of the united states will come up and you you should be able to figure out where you're at based on that map. Um, we've had several people asking for prayer for uh, one. Cami is asking for prayer for her son, and somebody was asking for prayer for their daughter or granddaughter. I saw earlier. Um, 
Old Dominion Homestead says, does composting logs in the bottom of a raised bed pull nutrients from the plants above? Not really. Uh, now it may take a little bit more nitrogen if you want it to break down really fast. You may have to add a little extra nitrogen. But if you'll add some earthworms and stuff like that into the raised bed like we do, uh, those worms will go down to them logs and they'll go to work or eating around on them and stuff like that and, and they'll begin to break down. And plus, keep your beds plenty moist because the water will also break it down. Uh, Rhonda says, is it okay to put small chunks of styrofoam in the bottom of a 17-inch high raised bed? Ha, huh, that's a good question because styrofoam is a chemical. Um, I personally wouldn't do it, but I can't honestly sit here and say you that, can put like that I know the chemical breakdown of it to tell you a, a, an honest answer yeah. chemically, but I personally wouldn't do it. I would use things like cardboard and things like that, but not a lot of printed cardboard, but just cardboard boxes that don't have a lot on them and stuff like that. Next, it says, why is walnut shells not good for your garden? Well, um, first of all, we have to determine what kind of walnuts we're talking about. I'm talking about black walnuts. Now, if you're talking about the English walnuts or uh, the Carpathian walnuts, the hulls may be okay, not the shells that goes around them. The shells around them uh, is what we put in ponds to, to take the oxygen out of the water to get fish to float up to the top. Uh, it's just, you know, they're very, uh, I don't know what the exact word is right now. Um, they remove the oxygen from the water. That's all I can tell you. But we've done it for years. Put them in a croaker sack, throw them over in a pond. The fish float to the top. You go get the fish out of the water. Uh, Kay asked that we pray for her friend Ronald. I'm just seeing uh, Brad uh, himself and two sons and grandchildren. Um, let's see. I heard that pine cones are good in the bottom of pots. Uh, pine cones probably will do okay. Now, it'll take them a long time to break down. That's the only thing about it. They don't break down very fast. It takes them a Tannin, while. Tannins. Is that what you were looking, the word you were looking for? Uh, no, I don't think it was tannins. Tannins is what's in acorns. Um, acorns, however you want to say it. But the holes are toxic. What about hickory nuts? Uh, <laughs> well, hickory nuts, if you plant hickory nuts, you know, they'll come up and make hickory nut trees, but, uh, Unless you just bust the holes up and take a sledgehammer and sit there and bust them up. <laughs> um, They're but, saying English walnuts aren't good either. She grew up with them, those trees. Okay. Well, the trees. Now, we're not talking about the trees. They're talking well, I mean, about the holes. But she said the shells are not or good. Or shells. Okay. Yeah, she did say that. Okay. The green I, black wa walnut holes will kill, ring, kill ringworms. Yes. yes that, this that is, is true. That is a really good tincture if you have green walnut holes it was would do the same thing or not all right so we bleeped in and out for a second oh um, trying to think what else we got going on uh I don't know. We've been busy all week. We've been busy all week yeah we have Seems like we've been busy. doing stuff every day just about it but I don't remember. With the old age comes <clears throat> Mississippi Soldier said it won't let them super chat. Do we have it turned off? Uh, no. It shows it here. It shows that it's working on ours. I well, I say that I don't. I mean, I don't know anything yet. Well, that's the super stickers. Uh, well, oh, yeah, you can, but you for each one of them, you get a, a dollar amount. Yeah. Yeah, super chats right here. Uh, yeah, you, you should be able to, I guess. Um, I don't know. I've yeah. never done Yeah, I mean, it works on our chat. end, so we don't have it turned off. Everybody else, Everybody else says works, theirs is working. Um, okay. Chat's not working. Um, um, best job, Daddy says, chat's not working for them. 
I think it's clicking in and out. Our the internet does that, and plus, didn't we have some kind of shoot off from the sun in the well, last guys, day? Or so? Well, guys, yeah, we've got some massive solar issues happening. I I really didn't, wasn't going to try to get into that, but we we have some really really bad okay. solar stuff. It cut out. Uh, Pamela said, "What do we say about ringworm?" Black walnut, when it's in the green stage before it turns, you know, when the nuts are in the green stage, the hulls can be used in a tincture to make um, something for ringworms. I guess I don't want to get too technical. I said it would help with them. Just saying. Thank you, Charles. And thank you, Carolyn. Um, I'm guessing it works. I'm they, guessing they it, works. it work. Thank yeah. you both. Um Oh, he said he had closed the app. Now it's working. Okay. Do you know what is eating basil? Oh, uh, there's a lot of stuff eats basil, to be honest with you. All right. Now, this one, uh, she asked a couple of times. Janet says, where do you find 82424? They can't find it in Houston. Uh, we just get it here at our local feed store, Janet. Um, I don't know if it's something that's... Uh, that only certain regions in the country get. You know, I don't know that. I just know it's at our feed store here, and that's where I get it. My Kentucky Home says, How do you get rid of cutworms besides squashing them? Uh, you can't really get rid of them unless you put DE around your plants, but then you can't water them or anything else because the DE don't work. Uh, the, what we found is to take a toilet paper rolls and cut them in a little, make little cylinders out of them and put them around your plants. And that has worked for us or wrapping uh, aluminum foil around the plants. That has worked for us to help us uh, not have any problems. Different ones have been having problems with internet being glitchy and buffering. And uh, one said they had power surges all week. Uh, some had to stop the chat and restart it. The internet, well, when you have something from the sun messing with stuff, it messes up internet and it'll glitch. It's going to happen a lot. What is our favorite thing to grow in a green stalk? Ooh. I've got some uh, I need to get started this year and I have to. You grow a lot of good stuff in green stalk, so strawberries do really good. Yeah. Uh, it's just difficult to get the strawberries to hang over and hang out like they're supposed well, to. You can't let them get down in. You, there. you have to fill the green stalk level to the top with dirt or soil and push the plant and push the plant out. Out. You know what I mean? Um I you would throw have to peppers say and <clears throat> one year I had tomatoes and peppers and stuff and yeah. probably that year was it was the prettiest I've ever had one. I had it under a little small one of these I don't know what. Are, how much is a little greenhouse? A little hundred dollar greenhouse. Like a hundred dollar greenhouse. Yeah. And I had it under it, and stuff just flourished under there. It loved that atmosphere. Plus, you had the uh, you had the kit that goes with it that holds things up from falling yeah, out away from it. Yeah, I've got the um, supports that yeah. go around it too. Okay, uh, T Bear says, Deep South Homestead, what's a great orange satsuma, etc., for our area? Now, I'm guessing you live in the same area that I live in, but we are trying a new brand this year called uh, Arctic Cold Satsuma. Our favorite. Arctic Blast. No, is it Arctic Blast? Arctic. I thought it was Arctic Cold. Anyway. Something. It's got uh, Arctic something at the beginning. Our favorite one of the Satsumas is the uh, Owari Satsuma has turned out to be our number one best Satsuma. The brown, or was it a brown Owari or just Owari? O-W-A-R-I or something like that. Uh, I think the kitchen minis would do good in a green stalk. Um, I thought about that. That is um, that is a good idea. And I may move mine into one. Um, it's according to, I mean, I don't know how tall they get, but I don't think it's going to be over a foot, foot and a half. I mean, I may be wrong. I've not looked into how tall they actually get. Um Uh, that is Arctic Frost. That's it. 
something or butt. Yeah, Arctic, uh, Arctic, that's Arctic frost. I was out there a while ago looking at them. I remember distinctly. I, I was frost. thinking blast for whatever. It's Arctic frost. Uh, Miss Lippy says Arctic frost. Yeah, that's what uh, they're called. Uh, mm. Our Alexander's mm. Hardware had a bunch of them, a lot of them, and I think they still had some. And I thought about getting a couple more because <laughs> uh, we do like Satsumas. D6, DC46 says your favorite and least favorite homestead animals. Who oh, our my least favorite? Our least favorite was probably the sheep. I didn't like the turkeys. I mean, I honestly, I didn't want to deal with turkeys. Yeah, I have to, I have to agree. I, I now, like now when turkeys. we say turkeys, we're talking about the broad breast ones. Now, this is not the this is not the royal palms or the, I didn't like them the slates or anything like that. They but were the, pretty, but I didn't like them. But the broad-breasted ones were just downright nasty. You know, I mean, they were just horrible. Uh, but our favorite homestead animal would be, my, would be the cows for me. Probably for me, it would have been our goats. I liked the baby goats, but then once they got bigger, I didn't like them. I just liked the babies. <laughs> you just liked the babies. <laughs> oh... Wildwood Dream says, "What is your, what is the smallest square foot area to successfully grow corn?" Well, it depends on what kind of corn you're growing. If you're growing sweet corn, I would say 10 by 10. Uh, if it was field corn, I would probably say, and there's lots of different types of field corn. I would say probably 20 by 20 feet would be the smallest that you could do it successfully. All right. Uh, Stacy said she was excited that she found a lot of huckleberry bushes on their property this year. There's a lot. They're good. You don't even have to transplant them. If you know where they're at and they're easy access, you can just leave them where they're at. Just go back and get your berries when they start uh, turning. We've got, ours are just loaded. Oh, ours Both are, places. Yeah. Deep that, South and Pecan Grove. There's so many huckleberries. And when Danny and I first married, I would walk around in the woods. He didn't have the place cleaned and all like it is now. And I would actually walk the perimeters and walk in the woods and, and gather. And most of the time he went with me. And one day I said, I'm going to pick huckleberries. He was busy doing something. And I wasn't going 20 minutes here he come on the tractor because back then we had to walk we didn't have i didn't have anything to ride so right. i was walking and he come he says i was worried i was afraid you'd get on a snake or something so that was when he he chased me down all the time I we chased. still newly wits. <laughs> yeah but you don't have to transfer them we did transfer some for our sidewalk but you don't have to if you know where they're at and you know what you're looking at then you go get them in the woods and just go through every couple of days in harvest you just got to beat the birds mudcat guys has it exactly right geomagnetic disturbances are, are associated with significant increases in hospital admissions for depression mental disorder psychiatric admissions suicide attempts homicides and traffic accidents yes the uh the geomagnetic fields around the earth definitely affect our bodies and our mental status a hundred percent agree with him on that. I mean, that is absolutely correct. Um, what about everybody else? Oh, she, she's asking what does most people like? Oh, um, Greg Champ says, where can I find Okinawa sweet potato slips? I went online the other day just looking and I found them in several places. I just Googled them and uh, lots of your... Uh, um, seed places came up with Okinawa uh, sweet potato slips. Now, I don't personally have any myself. I wanted to plant some, but we have the uh, the Musaki 29s. Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to tell you, those things have held in there for storage. I'm going to put some them, of those. We're going to have a I, I got a bucket sitting in the room in there that's still got some in them from last year. Mm -hmm. We had some for supper one night last week <laughs> yeah yeah they do but they're they're a hard sweet potato and they don't they're not as sweet as the others the, not that as sweet. one does have a touch of a sweet taste more than some of the purple and white yeah 
but it's still not as sweet as the orange ones. Yeah. Um, Keith Sullivan said, my first time having triple baby goats born Friday night. Wow. Wow. Just make sure, Keith, that she does not reject one of them. Because many times when they have triplets, one of them gets rejected. We've not even had twins. Ours all been single births. Yeah, we well, it's our first times we had them. The first yeah. year they usually have singles. All right. Uh, I don't know. I've got the ads on conservative. That's the lowest amount because they don't give you an option to take the ads off during the live. Used to there were no ads during the live. Now they don't give you an option, and I put it on okay. conservative, which is the least amount of ads, and y'all are still getting a lot of ads. Joshua Dean says, will the light from a security light outside affect a garden planted close to it? It doesn't affect the garden. What it does is it attracts insects like moths and stuff like that, and it helps them to find your plants a lot easier, and uh, your plants will end up having more insect damage if you have lights on outside. We don't usually allow any lights around any of our garden areas. Um, let's see. How are the Georgia Jets sweet potatoes? That was the big old ones, wasn't it? Yeah. I, they had a good taste. They had a real good taste. Ours yep. ended up like <laughs> gigantic. I like, they weren't like sweet potatoes. No, they, they like were giant like baseball rutabaga roots or something other. I mean, uh, hard to hard to deal with yes. because, because you can't handle them. We had to use Danny's whacker thing and cut them open or something because it, they were just too big. I don't know if they they're supposed to look like that or we had uh, some kind of anomaly <laughs> happen or what. I don't know what it was. It, there was a drought year. Yeah. Uh, redhead in the bed says, sorry I missed it, but what can I use to get rid of slugs and earwigs? Snails. Snails and earwigs. Copper. Copper gets rid of a lot of that stuff. I mean, it, it just, something about it. Copper and um, crushed up eggshells will do the same thing. Texas Chopper. Yes, I have grown Malabar spinach. If you go back and watch some of our videos in the high tunnels over at Deep South, it got slightly out of control the last few years, and, and I had to down yep. all of it. Uh, we have had, and I still have it coming up in, in containers now, um, but yeah, I've grown it for several years, and I let it get out of hand. <laughs> They'll be coming up this year, because we looked over it when out here in one of the high tunnels, uh, when we was Working in it the other day, and they smell of our spinach seeds everywhere. In There's there. little ones coming out. I done pulled two or three of them. Oh, have you? I knew, yeah. they, I knew it was about time for them. I don't mind one plant and it going, but once the seeds start falling, you're going to have it forever. Yep. Uh, David Wells says he got his plants from Vigo this week, and they all look awesome. We ordered ours too early. That's what happened. They got hit well, by the cold. Yeah, ours got transplanted or transferred in the cold but now the tomatoes and the cucumbers pull and peppers all look amazing it took them a couple of days to acclimate and then the what is it the cantaloupe are beginning to look like they're pulling out the watermelon is iffy and it's really really early here for planting watermelon yeah. anyway um do you can spinach? No, I don't can it. Um, I'm going to probably do... I, I've harvested some regular spinach this week. And Danny wants me to try spinach and eggs. I've never had spinach and eggs. Spinach and scrambled eggs for breakfast. Yep. That's probably what he's going to fix me when he thinks tomorrow. <laughs> I've not had it before, but I mean, it, no, it, no big deal. Danny, is it okay to water cattle and crops with city water? Uh, I personally would not without if running that's it. That's all you have. I mean, if it's all you have, I understand. But I personally, if I could run it through some kind of filter system and get the chlorine and all that out of it, I would do that. Because, you know, just drinking bleach just ain't good for you. Uh, Stephanie Alexander wants to know, do we grow Jerusalem artichokes? 
Nope, we don't care for the artichokes. Uh, I know they're very hardy, but we don't care for them. Uh, Darlene asks, what fertilizer do you use on onions? They're about two inches in diameter. I don't fertilize my onions once they start making a bulb like that. I don't, I don't mess with them. I just leave them alone. Um, Sue Ann says, do I have to pull up my weed cloth every year to till if I use it to plant in the ground? Uh, Suzanne, no, you don't have to pull it up every year because really nothing has happened underneath the soil to compact it unless you've walked all over it and stomped on it or something like that. Um, the only issue is if, if you need to amend the soil, you, you may have to pull one side of it up where you can get underneath it to amend it with something. So that would be the only thing that I could think of. You're going to have to add some cheese to my uh, scrambled eggs and spinach. They're giving me some ideas. Ah. They, Danny knows I like cheese and scrambled eggs. and yep. So I can, the spinach, everybody's Tamara, Jan, Jan Stephanie, Jesus, they're, I mean, they're all telling well, me. Well, remember Bossa Swamp used to make a, what they call a quiche? Yeah, uh, it'd be similar, it'd to, be similar a, to a quiche. Doing a um, a omelet or a, a type of you can do a spinach casserole. omelet. Yeah, you know, throw and I got a little bit of chicken in there. I could whack up a little bit of that and throw it in and yep. some spinach and some cheese and y'all, I'm getting hungry yep. and I just ate. I had a nice steak while ago on the grill. <laughs> I like when we have some beef around. Raw uh, Food Rider says, any advice for a good used vehicle? Prices seem sky high. I, unless you find somebody you know that's willing to part with one real reasonable. Wanda and I looked at them here about a year ago, and we decided to keep what we got. I'm still driving my 2006 Ford Quad Cab four-wheel drive. I, I'll keep driving. I told her, I said, I'll replace the motor in it if I have to. Cul-de-sac said, did you see my comment at the beginning that voodoo dust is amazing on eggs? Miss Lippy's voodoo dust is amazing on about anything. <laughs> yep. Uh, that is probably one of my favorites. I didn't know. I thought it was going to be really hot, but it isn't. Uh, it's just a good combination of pepper and uh, I think it's got garlic. I can't remember, but anyway, I ain't giving Miss Lippy secrets away, but it's just a good combination of uh, light herbs mixed together. So, yeah, it'd be good on eggs. Um, oh, boy, jump. What are yeah. we at here? Okay. What? Um, oh, let's see. How did one... you ever hear McDonald's will be selling Krispy Kreme soon? I thought of you. I ain't going to McDonald's to get a Krispy Kreme. Nope, we don't. Uh -uh. We don't go in McDonald's for nothing. We've got a little place out. Um, I, do you know the name of it? That I get donuts occasionally. I don't get them very often. Maybe once a year, but um, the little blue building. That's just a donut shop. I mean, I know, but you know, I, I don't it's know. A donut. It's a. It's, it's a, just a do. We just call it the donut shop. I mean, it's, that's um, a. Privately, I mean, yeah, a, yeah, pri it's, it's a private a, owned. It's not a Krispy Kreme or nothing yeah. like that. They make quite a good few donuts there. All right, where are we at? Everybody talking about spinach and eggs. Yep. Let's see. Uh, just as if your iron stores are low, did they also place you on iron F? Iron, that's iron F. Yeah. To increase, I take iron, yes. Yes, she takes the iron F, um, FE. FE, yes. All right. Uh, okay, where are we at here? This thing keeps jumping. you moving if it If I around. move it, I was holding it a while ago. Uh, T-Bear says, I still drive my 1998 Chevy pickup. It's still in perfect condition. What is yours, though? Mine's a 2006. Oh, yours a little bit newer. For what I paid for it, it better last me till I die. All right, let's see. Uh, Darlene says, just starting a garden space. What do you recommend? Soil test. Do a soil test. We have a link in the description for a horse tool. Not horse tool. Grower Solutions. <laughs> uh, go get one of their soil tests. Take a soil sample out of it before you do anything and find out what you need to start with. And 
only grow what you like to eat. Don't yes. experiment the first Lord, time. Lord, Try yes. some plants that you know you like to eat and, and get to know them first and how they grow and stuff and then branch out. Jeff Jackson says, Wanda, try some salmon, those eggs. Nah. Wanda, I love salmon. Woman don't, don't like salmon. I can't. I don't she like much fishy foods. She don't like escargot or anything like that. I don't like many fishy foods. Yeah. Uh, I like normal fish stuff, not that stuff. I don't like salmon. I've tried it several times over the years, and I can't make myself. Uh, Let's see here. Do you think Delaware is an okay state to move to? Woo. I don't know. That's much kind about of Delaware. That's kind of close to the capital. Um, I, I, it ain't for me. Okay, let me say that. I'm not saying it's a bad place. I'm just saying it's not for me because it's just too close to where things are probably going to start happening. All right, where do you buy Miss Lippy's seasonings? It's called Miss Lippy's Bl Miss Lippy's Blends dot com, I think. Lippy put up a a, a thing for uh, David. Um, Miss Lippy down here will put her link in. Uh, the new calf name. We had three born within a week. Oh Lord, uh, yes. What do we name them? <laughs> I don't think we named any of them, did we? Yes, we named all three of them, but I don't remember. To be honest, uh, they don't get called their calf names. They don't get young. called names Danny because... Danny calls them little boys. I just call them little man because here we go. We've got four boys. <laughs> one of them's... Rudy's going to go to be butchered. Uh, the brown one is already spoken for. The black one, one of the black ones is already spoken for, and it only leaves one more black one. So I said, you know what? I'm not worrying about naming nothing. I mean, cause I think we named them, but I don't remember what we named them. So I was just, I'm just. Um, when they're spoken for like that, uh, I don't, I don't try to call them by any name. Uh, Kayla said Delaware is the worst for starting a business per Elon Musk. <laughs> uh, any clover under blueberries only or only red clover that's pamela white clover or red clover. any clovers that give off nitrogen will work fine and whatever's best for your area whether it's arrow leaf clover red clover red crimson clover or just crimson clover white dutch clover i mean whichever one is best in your area and does the best as long as it gives off you know nitrogen it they're all fine Wanda G says, has the sugar cane come up? Yes, it's up about uh, 8 to 10 inches tall right now. Uh, all right. Let's see, where are we at now? Is raw milk worth it? That's Jeff Outdoors. Jeff Outdoors, yeah. Well, I, let me put it to you this way. I don't drink milk. Um, my daddy uh, raised me that... He said that the human race is the only mammal on the face of the earth that drinks milk after it's been weaned. And he says, he, now my daddy drank a gallon of milk a week. He drank clabbered milk. He drank buttermilk. I mean, he drank all kinds of milk. It but wasn't that he was against it. It wasn't that he was against it. He just told me, he said, son, it's not necessary for the human body. The human body can function perfectly without it. He said, but just understand that humans are the only creatures on the face of the earth that once they're weaned, continues to drink milk. All right, Kayla says she wants some pond stocking and managing. Give her some pointers. She had to build one, had one built last fall, and she's ready for fish. Well, first thing, Kayla, is go to a fish hatchery, take a sample of your water, and have it pH tested. What's the name of this one over here? Uh, Slade's Fish Hatchery out here, out from us, test his water pH and um, once you get the pH then you need to do whatever it takes to get the pH in your water right and then you can move forward from that point forward you may have to fertilize the water you may have to lime it we had to put about a ton of lime in each one of our ponds in order to bring the pH up to where the algae was right and the, the what's that 
photoplankton was right uh, <laughs> in the in the water and everything like that. And once we did that, look, our fish just they Cadillac. Uh, Lou just Lou said, pray for her brother that uh, he had had a stroke. Um, Donna said, isn't Delaware where Biden lives? <laughs> uh, it, yeah, that's, that's probably about right. You got to look and see uh, what the, what the laws in the state of Delaware are before you move there. Auntie M says, play, pray for her sister. Um, uh, let's see. Tamara says, I can suck a mud bug head, but I cannot do liver. I'm right there with you, girl. Yeah, I don't like any of that. That's like eating mm -hmm. raw oysters. I, I can't eat a raw oyster. My wife that passed away could suck them things down like a... Oh, Lord. I mean, just fast as she put them in her mouth, she could get rid of them. But I got to have that baby cooked, and it's got to be cooked well. DS said, what did the doctor do for your iron level? I'm dealing with low iron. He gave me an iron tablet. Uh, a prescription a, a iron prescription tablet. prescription iron. Yeah. And uh, I take one a day, and... It seems to be working so far. I think he may have gotten the problem when he took the polyp out. So we'll know in another month or so if I start getting really, really tired and weak. If not, you know, maybe that helped. And I'm trying to do other things like eating things that would keep my levels up and help build blood. Happy birthday, Cindy T. Happy birthday. Uh, let's see. Laura. Uh, let's see. It says, when do you throw down clover seeds? 7A in New York. Uh, now would be the time. You would want to put it down ahead of time because you don't want to wait till right at the day. Clover seeds have a hard shell. Now you want to, you really need an inoculant on it. Some of them come with an inoculant already on them, but it's better to inoculate your clover seeds before you throw them down because that way they'll come up a lot faster. Mr. Ray said he bought 300 catfish from Slades and 200 red ear brim. You know, I didn't know fish had ears. Well, they call them red ear brim because they got like a red thing on the side of their head. <laughs> I know, but still, I thought that was funny. Uh, we had some, didn't we? Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. I think that's what's in one of our ponds. When I was getting um, mulberries this morning and yesterday... Something flops really big in the pond, I, and I always oh, I turn around too late. I, I saw can't it today. See what it is? No, I saw it today when I come across the dam. That carp, carp. is the carp is about three feet long. That's what I figured. That's carp. Because I first looked out there, I said, "Man, there's a log floating around in the pond." And I looked down there, and it, all of a sudden, it just started swimming off. I was like, "Whoa, that carp is huge!" Yeah, I figured it was a carp, but I couldn't see it, yeah. so I wasn't sure. Ozark says pray for his brother um renee says praise report my grandson was born healthy and my mom is doing well and the mom is doing well you moved it i don't know where it went <laughs> um judy swindle says she got an emp shield for a honda cvr but the engine is so well packed i can't find room for it what do you suggest Oh, uh, my car was like that. Wanda's car was like that. I had to drill a hole. <laughs> I had to drill holes in the firewall and put it in the firewall out there. Uh, I mean. Go watch on Crazy Days. Uh, I, I forgot if it's the woman putting in an EMP shield. What did I name it? Some about EMP shield installed by a woman or something. Well, a woman installs EMP shield. It's on Crazy Days. D A Z E S. Um, and it'll show you where Danny showed me where to put mine. He had to drill something, but I hooked everything Yeah, I had up. to drill and put it in the, um, literally in the firewall. I had to drill holes. All right, where are we at? Okay. <laughs> it's actually, we're past our time. Yeah, I know. Let me get to where we should be, right there. All right, so we've got a lot of people asking for prayer tonight. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I cook in cast iron a lot. Now, I'm not crazy about livers. Now, chicken livers I used to would eat, and I've not had any because we, when we did our chickens, we used that for We used bait. it for catfish bait. <laughs> <laughs> the catfish ate well. Yeah. Um, but when I was little, I ate liver all the time, but now I've not had any in many, many, many years. Oh, uh, Wonder Knee 1, uh, bone sauce does not keep raccoons away. No. 
It's not made for that. What does inoculate mean? Inoculate is a bacteria that you put, or uh, you you can uh, you can get it in a powder form, and you mix a little water with it, put your seeds in there with it, and uh, you stir them all around in there. It's a bacteria that eats away at the outside of the shell. Plus, it gives the plant nitrogen to help it get started off, so that it can get growing until it can pull nitrogen from the air. Uh, Tim Peters says, "Please pray for my son Josh." Uh, what else are we looking at? Miss Lippy put up my woman EMP. installs EMP shield. That's what it is. Yeah. So there you go. I might show you. It says rotten eggs would keep raccoons away. I think they'd eat them. I think I don't know. I killed raccoons and had dead ones laying there. You couldn't hardly smell it. Stand the smell to even go out in the garden, and a raccoon standing two foot from it still eating corn. Yeah. The stinky bait, yeah, Jeff. Oh. That's what my grandson was using the last time he was here, I think. He was using stinky bait. Um, Leslie said, pray for brother-in-law, Mr. Ray, his niece. Unspoken. Um, lots of people having prayer requests. Uh, Danny and I always, both of us are still having things like my legs and hips and his neck and back and heart heart uh the eyes seem to have kind of well today i've had a lot of trouble with my eyes today but still you, i still am but you uh, said that might stem from that stems from looking down while i was plowing corn looking there watching that corn just go by one right after another for an hour you know sitting there doing that and that uh anything he does repetitious like yeah. that with his eyes sitting here looking to screen tonight trying to read them things i have to keep looking away because it, yeah. it does affect my eyesight i have glasses but it doesn't seem to be helping yeah so a lot of people have lots of different types of requests and things yeah, and it's, so there's there's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, we all have, we all have a lot of needs, you know. I mean, on one and I is not spring chickens anymore, you know. I mean, we're getting older and uh, <coughs> we have physical issues just like everybody else does. And we wake up every day and look in the mirror and wonder what happened to the person who went to bed the night before, you know. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's horrible. I mean, we sit there in the morning, we go, oh. I need some help moving around here, you know. And Old Dominion, it says on a hill far away, and it has a cross. And it has the words to the song, uh, Old Rugged Cross. Yeah, we're running way past time. People's got to get up early in the morning, so. Yeah. Uh, I guess we better go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you tonight. Lord, it's uh, been a good night. Uh, we thank you for that. Thank you for all the people who showed up in the chat tonight. Uh, many of them had good questions, and we pray that we can answer them honestly and, and be a blessing to them. And, and Lord, I pray that tonight I can be a blessing back by praying for them. Uh, lots of people with cancer and uh, all kinds of uh, Mr. Ray's wife with the heart valve problem. I, I can relate to that. Uh, pray for them. Uh, lots of people psychological disorders and, and that's going to be another thing with what's going on with our solar system psychological disorders are going to be on the rise so uh we do pray about that father and uh, a lot of unspoken prayer requests tonight that's something that um we don't usually see a lot of them but we noticed there was a good bit of them come through tonight which means that people um people have things that are so close to their heart that they can't just mention out in the open those are the things that are most intimate with you, Father. So we pray about those and ask that you take time to look at those requests also. And uh, we know several of our friends on here that's going through cancer treatments and, uh, you know, and, and, and have come down with cancer. A lot of them have. And whether it be lung, colon, breast, you know, there's all different types of it. And we, we pray for them, Father. I'm very familiar with it, done hundreds and hundreds of hours of research into it. And Father, you've opened my eyes to a lot of truth. And, uh, I, and I thank you for that. And I pray for these people tonight who are in this situation that uh, they can get the help that they need and that their bodies can be healed. We know that 
there's cures out there if only they were allowed to be used father oh what a what a sad thing when we know there's something there and we can't have it father and lord i just lift them all up before you tonight um and ask that you take time to listen to their requests father they were faithful enough to mention it and i pray that in return you'll be faithful enough to to hear it and answer it for them father Go with us through the night. Many of them will rise up tomorrow to go about their daily routines. And, and I pray that tomorrow many will look to you and realize that the cross is where it all took place at, Father. We love you. We appreciate you. And ask that you forgive us now. We ask this in thy name. Amen. Oh, man. My eyes are starting to water. <laughs> yeah, mine are. Getting fuzzy feeling. Oh. Mm. Yeah, many of you will um, be celebrating Easter or Passover. No, not Passover, uh, but Easter. Passover's coming up. Passover will be in another week or so. Is it about a week? Yeah. They're really close. And. Uh, well, they're not that close this year uh, for some strange reason. I, just kind of, I thought that was kind of weird. but. Yeah, well, they're not the... Sometimes they'll fall close, uh, right? Sometimes like they're within nature. a few days of each other. Yeah. yeah. So... Different people will celebrate in different ways, and uh, we want to just pray that everybody is safe tomorrow. They oh. travel. Um, I guess we'll have one more live stream before the eclipse, so we ain't worried about it. But I mean, I'm yeah. trying to think of yeah. dates and stuff yeah, I coming guess we, up. I guess we will. We'll have. Um, um, we'll see what's going on by then, but uh, I don't think we're going to have a whole lot of issues from this, but there may well, be issues afterward. It depends um, on if anyone tries to do something stupid. Yeah. So we just have to pray that none of that happens. Yeah. And everything just... <clears throat> All right, they want their tip. Oh, everybody's wanting a tip, 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 tip. <laughs> Well, guys, based on what's going on in the country, y'all, I'm sure that none of you, there's nobody in this chat that don't know we had a boat that hit, but we didn't have one, one from Singapore actually hit a bridge, a bridge, the Francis Scott Key Bridge up in Baltimore. I was actually, believe it or not, I was watching it when it happened. Now, how crazy is that? Okay. Um... I think God just woke me up just for that very reason, I'm and guessing. And they put it up to start with. You and were up, uh, They put it up right when I was up. It came on to, It came on as breaking news. And and I, I, I sit there and looked at it. And, of course, I can't go really deep into detail about it. I know it's, I know probably who's going to get burnt because of it. But, I mean, it's one of the things that it is probably a terrorist situation. You know, we do believe that. Um, but with that being said, there's lots of things happening all over our country. There's, there's going to be a few more things happen. They're watching for a few more things. And with that being said, and that being known, the one thing that we must, must do, we got information this week about what's going on in the solar system, about what's going on with the sun. And all this kind of stuff. with some really freaky stuff going on with the sun right now. And because of that, our food system in the near future could very well be compromised. And if your food system is compromised, that means that people will do without because food prices will get even higher and some things may not be available. We know that the, where the boat's at going up and down that river right there, that's going to be shut down for probably a month or two at the least, you know. So there's nothing going to be coming and going, getting up in through those areas. So what I'm going to tell you tonight may not sound like it's important, but trust me, if you depend on your garden, for your food sources, like Wanda and I do, and you can't go to a grocery store, the one thing you're gonna wanna know is what's in your soil. You're gonna wanna take a soil sample. 
My tip for tonight is know your soil. Do a soil sample. Even if you just have to go to your county extension service, and some of them do it for free. Some of them's an $8 charge. Some of them's a $10 charge. Ours is $10, I think, here. Mm -hmm. But we opt to go through Grower Solution One than I do. We have everything we do tested. It's 30 bucks to have that test done. But they test for like 15 to 17 different things. And we're going to have a video coming up shortly to show you the differences between our beds after we amended them as it was before we amended them. And I want you to look at the difference in the beds because food is only beneficial to the human body if it is nutrient dense. Just plain food, plain vegetables that have no nutrition to them, no vitamins in them, is virtually useless to the human body other than just a filler. I mean, it'll keep you alive, yes, but you will still have major health problems. So you want to make sure your soil is as nutrient dense as you can get it. And the only way you can do that is by having a soil analysis done to see what's in the soil. Because if it's not in the soil, your plant cannot take it up and put it into the vegetable for you to be able to utilize it in your body. Now, if your body has a issue with malnutrition, it doesn't matter what you put in it then. It's, it's, that's your body's problem. But please, get your soil tested and find out what you need to be able to grow very nutrient-dense food. Learn by looking at your plants from your soil test and tell what's lacking. Do some study on weeds. Did you know that whatever kind of weeds grows on your property tells you what your soil is lacking at? Uh, Google still, I think, still has some things up where you can where you can Google uh, soil uh, deficiency based on weeds. You can Google that and you can look at if I've got too much dock growing or if I got too much sagebrush growing or if I got too much of this growing or milkweed and all that kind of stuff growing, it tells you what your soil is lacking in. So if you can't afford a soil test, at least do yourself a favor and go and look at your weeds you have on your property. Identify them and see what they're telling you about your soil. Maybe your soil is compacted. Maybe it's sandy. Maybe it has too much clay in it. The weeds will tell you everything about your soil. That's my tip for tonight, guys. All right, so I think we're done. My legs hurt. Your legs is it hurting you? Yeah, well. I can't sit too long. I've been standing a lot, and so my legs hurt from standing, but when I sit, they hurt, so it, it's a no-win situation. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Oh. I like how y'all say Happy Resurrection Day because I don't believe in Easter myself personally. I mean, I don't want to get into that debate because I don't. I think Easter is a pagan holiday. Uh, but I do like when you say Happy Resurrection Day because really and truly, guys, it is about the resurrection. Yeah. You know? yeah. Easter is what we grew up with and we recognize it as Easter, the day, but... They've changed it from when we were kids to making it a huge candy and um, Easter bunnies and play day. Play I day, guess, yeah, is basically it. Uh, we've always hunted eggs. When I was little, we hunted eggs, but that and we got a basket. But it, once you got to be five, six years old, you didn't get one no more. And nowadays, it, everybody gets a basket. Everybody gets stuff, and I'm like, good grief! And they see how big and bowl they can how many gifts they can add in the basket yeah. and stuff you know i'm not big on all that yeah. i like it simple i liked my big meals with the family and the kids have an easter egg hunt and everybody fellowships that that was the big deal and i know eggs wasn't nothing to it but <laughs> but we love the church service yeah. we always had some type of um 
not not a cantata. What, is that? Yeah, yeah maybe a yeah, cantata. Was, is what yeah, I'm, they always had a that, cantata. We always yeah. had a cantata, and uh, that was my favorite thing because I played the piano and I loved that part of it. Yeah. Uh, Sue Gerard says, did you see that Biden made a new holiday? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, he is all We're not up. getting into that. We ain't gonna get into that one. Anyway, we gotta get out of here, guys. A lot of y'all need to get up early. So, have a blessed night. Have a blessed day tomorrow. We love you.